This video is about my trip back home, finally, after, uh, well, my other trip was six years ago, but I just saw my mom pre-transition, so after that, uh, four, more, four more years went by, um, and I haven't seen my grandmother in like a decade now since I left. So my grandpa, you know, passed away three months ago, and my grandma has really been depressed and didn't really feel like talking to anyone. Um, I've noticed the change through um, the instant messaging app we use and I just got really worried about her and I wasn't sure like exactly what was going on here because no one updates me and my family um, due to them not fully understanding and being able to accept my whole choice to transition and feeling like the opposite uh, sex. I just felt like, hey, it's time and I needed to go. So I booked the ticket, um, got a hotel 20 minutes away. So I'm actually in the hotel room now and um, flew in on a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, I told well, everyone knew that day I got here. I called my mom and my cousin told my aunt and grandma. And uh, grandma's like, hey, uh, not a good time. Uh, return your tickets. Uh, listen to me, blah, blah. And I was like, I knew she was going to say that. I knew it. But I was like, yeah, I, I was already prepared for that. I was like, hey, I'm already here. So, nope, can't return it. And she's like, oh, okay. So then my mom, she took that actually better than I thought. Cause she was just like, oh, you're there? Okay, well, enjoy your stay. And I was like, uh, okay, uh, well, I hope to see ya. But if not, then oh well. And so um, my aunt, uh, she was just like, from what I heard, because she's been avoiding me. Um, she's also just not ready to face the truth. She hasn't really said much, except that she's also not ready to accept me being trans, because uh, I had a lot of childhood memories, like good ones, good memories with her. Uh, she was like a mother to me, like, she just had such a positive impact in my childhood. So um, when my mom was away working or whatever, she would bring me out and have fun and spend time with me, you know. And I really appreciated that. And um, she looked out for me and treated me like one of her own kids. And um, I know she loves me a lot and uh, she cares, still cares about me, but she just can't come around to the fact that I'm no longer identifying as female and uh, looking like um, her niece. She's been avoiding me, but like it's weird because my grandma lives with her. So like every morning she just goes out uh, to her store like to work on stuff and um, then my grandma's like, come over now, your aunt just left, and I'm like, okay. So, um, yeah, like, the second day, Thursday uh, morning, I went over there, like, pretty early, like, 8.30, and grandma made me, um, uh, breakfast, and, uh, then we talked, and then took some pictures. And then drove her back to the hotel here. Uh, we boiled some, it's called zongzi. It's like mm, rice with like meat or other things wrapped in like a, like a wrapper. And then you just kind of boil or steam it. And yeah, so we had lunch here uh, together. And then after that, I didn't know, but uh, my grandma's like, Oh, I recognize this area. Like your grandpa's grave is literally like three minutes drive away down the road here. And I'm like, oh really? Wow, like I, we gotta go. Like, she's like, yeah, yeah, let's go and pay respect to him. 
So I was like, okay. So yeah, I drove her out there. It was a rainy day, but uh, we went to the cemetery and she was uh, very emotional, very sad and cried. Um, the moment I parked there next to the gravesite and she was just screaming and crying um, in the car at first. And she was like, why did you leave me here alone? And uh, you said, you know, we would go together. Like, you know, what is the point of living anymore? And all that like uh, negative stuff. And uh, then she's like, well, it's not raining that hard. So let's go out and bow three times to your grandpa, pay respect. Like, just like go like this. She was like, please watch over me and please watch over uh, your grandson. I was like, hello, Grandpa. Um, happy New Year and please protect Grandma and protect me. And um, I love you. I'm getting emotional. Uh, we went back home to my aunt's house, dropped her off and she like cooked uh, what did she make for me? She just, she made something like tomato and eggs and had some grilled meat that my aunt grilled and gave me a whole bunch of food. She gave me a new bag, so like now I have two bags to carry. There's a lot of food in there and I'll show you guys later, I guess, um, all the snacks and stuff. She's like, I just want you to like feel full and not starve. So I was like, I was fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, but you know how grandmas are. So, um, yeah, um, dropped her off, I left because they don't want me to be there when my little cousins are back because they might be negatively influenced by me according to their thought process. But even if it's like completely wrong, I'm gonna just respect that because they're just having a hard time with this. That night I cried so much. Uh, I was just feeling so many emotions about so many things, um, family related stuff. I cried so much, my eyes like got so red and swollen. Um, like, it was painful. I let it all out though, and... Cause I thought my, like, my aunt was really angry and still angry with me with the way I left. Like there was no communication with her when my grandma and her came to my school dorm to try to stop me from leaving, but I was trying to lie to them at the time because I wasn't ready to come out and really expose a lot of my feelings to them at the time. I was scared and immature and just wasn't ready um, to face everyone and really tell them, hey, like, I have a girlfriend at the time or like, I may be trans, like all this, like, it's just something that we never, we didn't even talk about sex, we didn't talk about much of anything really that personal to each other so it, it, it just wasn't a thing at the time and so yeah um i wanted to apologize to my aunt like for the way i left like kind of ghosted them uh after i gave them my phone number so they would leave but then i just like blocked them because they kept spamming my phone uh, my dad cut me off financially so like at the time my well my ex-girlfriend now but my first girlfriend, um, we were together for a while that didn't work out, but um, her sister got me a new phone, a new phone number, because my dad cut me off, you know, and I didn't have a phone or a way to reach out to people in case something happened, like emergency. Uh, and my dad just cold heartedly cut me off and was like, good luck then. If you don't listen to me, then try to, you know, manage yourself somehow. Um, and at the time I had no job and basically relying on, on my dad's income to like pay for school. And then he was like threatening me that I, I, if he saw me again, like at my aunt's house and he would like start a war or something. So I didn't want to cause anyone trouble. Um, and you know, I'm a pretty independent person and didn't want to rely on them, you know, and all that. So, um, cause they're my... It's my aunt's family and they're really, they, she was really generous and nice to me and all, but like, I just didn't want to cause her too much issues. Um, and so I figured the best thing to do was leave. Um, it wasn't easy for me. I didn't want to leave, but like at the time I just, I didn't even think about how much it affect 
like it would worry my grandma and just really make a negative memory on them for a while and hurt them in that way uh it was just really f fueled by emotions and fear at the time i wasn't really thinking too logically um and i was only like 18 or 19 so i didn't have much support after my dad cut me off so um so anyway uh yeah back to where i am now today is friday friday i went over there this morning um grandma cooked me lunch and also dinner and uh, then we went to the local garden and walked around and took more pictures, so we had a really good time there. My aunt used to take me there a lot in my childhood years and I'd always enjoy the garden with her. It's beautiful. It's uh, spectacular in certain times of the year. Well, it's the winter right now, but in the summertime, the flowers are in full bloom and it's just really pretty there. And uh, my grandma seems to enjoy it a lot. She'd go with my grandpa when, you know, he was still alive. So I spent a lot of quality time though uh, the past few days and I'm sure she, like, she, I know she's like really happy to see me and I've helped her cheer up and maybe brought her out, out of her depression or something, but hoping you know, when I leave, she, she doesn't go back into it, but uh, hoping that she has the strength or a little more optimism in her life to move forward, you know, and just live on. Uh, realize that her family, the rest of us still care and love her and view her as like an important person in our heart and uh, I just just wanted to remind her of that and how important she is to me especially because she um, raised me like in the first five years of my life in China before I moved to America so yeah um, went back home and dropped her off and uh, tomorrow is my last day here not sure what, what the plan is tomorrow because I don't know if my mom's gonna come over. If she is, then I might meet her at my aunt's house and other people then. If not, then I don't know. My grandma might ask one of my cousins to drive her over to the hotel just to send me off. But ideally, if I can just go back over there and see her again at the house, that'd be nice. So uh, yeah, it's overall, it's been a, a really emotional, um, but worthwhile and heartfelt and touching trip uh i really hope i can come back and visit some more after this but uh i think that this trip has helped my aunts and maybe my parents as well just really see like how much that they mean to me and uh how serious i am and and really understanding of them and patient with them because uh, our culture is just much more stubborn when it comes to transgender lgbt or anything out of their norm things uh, minority stuff so uh it's really hard for them to understand that so uh yeah but my aunt gave me some red envelopes and my grandma that uh that was unexpected but I really appreciate that and I sent her a thank you message. I'm actually gonna write a, a thank you note, like handwritten in Chinese, and my Chinese sucks. So I'm gonna have to translate it and then write it down. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna have my grandma give that to her tomorrow and slowly just kinda melt away her fear and anxiety of me uh, seeing me again and turning into a boy and whatever. So hopefully that works, but I have hope in her and I will continue to wait and practice patience and understanding. And yeah, one of these days, uh, one of these days, I think that she'll work up the courage to really meet me again and 
yeah, be a family again. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. I will uh, let you guys know. And when I get home, uh, I'll show all the snacks and stuff that my grandma gave me. So I made it back home safely last night and oh my gosh, yesterday it was crazy and uh, another dream come true for me because I was not expecting it on my last day. So the morning of my last day uh, in Georgia, my grandma um, messages me that she talked to my mom and my mom suddenly decided that she wanted to meet me so um i was like omg like i was in shock i i just couldn't believe it because the whole time it was so unexpected i didn't think that she would come through like that and find the courage to really see me again um considering it was my last day I just wasn't sure what she was thinking, but uh, she called me and was like, Hey, um, we can meet up at this Chinese restaurant near Atlanta and uh, you can bring grandma. So um, yeah, she found this restaurant, sent me the location. Then I drove to my aunt's house. And of course my aunt is not there again, but it's okay because She's no longer angry with me. Um, she got over that, but she views me as her own kid ever since I was young. And we just spent a lot of good times together. And um, it's just really hard on her because she just loves me so deeply that um, seeing that I've changed so much in that way, the whole gender thing, it's still really hard for her to accept. So, um, I wrote a letter though for my aunt to let her know that I understand her feelings and that it's hard for her to talk to me right now, but I'm willing to wait. And um, in the past decade, I've learned the skills of patience and understanding. And I also told her, um, no matter what, I'll always love her and to eat healthy, so like drink less soda and more water, things like that. So then I told my grandma to give the note to her. Um, my aunt read it and was really happy from what I heard. Um, so anyway, my grandma and I, I drove her to the restaurant uh, near the city. And um, we got there first and got a table. It was a lot of people and it's super big, authentic Chinese restaurant. And so we sat there waiting like 10 minutes and then my mom finally shows up. My grandma like just got up and was like, is that your mom? And I was like, yeah, I think it is. And I was like waving like, you know, like mom. And she saw me and her face um, when she saw me was like, like uh, it wasn't happy. It was just like, oh, hmm. Mm. Okay, so uh, I I mean I got up there like I was excited and I hugged her and I was like mom um, or I think I told her uh, I missed her I don't know but we sat down and ordered food well the food they just kind of pushed like they had carts of food and they pushed it around and um, if we wanted anything like they just stopped the cart and gave it to us. Uh, we can also order, but um, mostly just or like we just took the food from the carts and that's just how they roll. So um, we were there for like two hours and we talked and all that caught up and tried to better understand each other and stuff. And then we went next door to a Costco and walked around and talked some more. Um, so... Then my mom bought me new pants and I'm sure she was really happy to like get me something in person um, after like not seeing me for a while. So uh, my grandma and I, you know, we all, all three of us, we just like sat on this couch in Costco and just talked. Well, my grandma kind of like fell asleep in the middle of it <laughs> on the couch. She, she just gets knocked out so easily these days. She's like sleeps a lot, so. Um, She's walking wobbly as well, but um, 
overall, I think she's doing okay. Um, just her legs kind of hurt sometimes, and she has to use this medicine cream to, I don't know, ease the pain. So, I mean, she's 80, so, you know. Um, yeah, so then after we had a whole discussion about why I transitioned and how she told me not to, but I did anyways, and then uh, just how I tried to get her to understand that it wasn't just a phase for me, like she kept saying other people had the same idea and feelings uh, when they were younger, but I was like, yeah, well, that's them. And I'm not like that because those feelings never went away for me and only got stronger and I eventually just had to do what I had to do to make myself happy and um, I just couldn't live like that where like I go to a public restroom and don't feel comfortable and then in the female bathroom uh, or people misgender me in public and I just I wouldn't feel right so I told her all that and she's always like I just want you to be happy and I'm like but I am happy like the way I am now um everything that I, I the choices I made for myself they didn't hurt anyone and you know it only made me happier and more confident and a stronger person in general and I just want her to understand that and be happy for me like truly so yeah, we um, had a great chat and I was like seeing, I told her seeing her made me even happier uh, during that trip. So uh, then we hugged, told them mom and grandma I love them and I left. Yeah, so um, the other part of this video, <laughs> my grandma gave me a whole bag, like I brought one bag of clothes and stuff. But then my grandma gave me a whole bunch of food. During the stay, so I didn't have to really go out and buy food, which is great, and she's so generous. So before I show you the food, I also forgot to mention that my mom also gave me a red envelope. I got like three red envelopes, technically, from my mom, my aunt, and my grandma, and uh, that was a lot of money. Um, it was like $1,700, and like the most I've ever gotten from red envelopes. But uh, the majority of it, like a thousand, was from my aunt. So I know she still loves me. Um, <laughs> not just from the money, but I understand her heart better now. Uh, then my grandma gave me like 500 and my mom gave me like 200 So I wanted to show you guys the envelopes themselves because they're always so beautiful. Um, this one was the $1,000 one. <laughs> and... This one was from my mom, the $200, but still very nice and shiny. Here's the food. All right, y'all, let's start with this one. So this bag is full of walnut, date, and black sesame slice. I think they were kind of like a hard, sweet, nutty candy. Yeah, it's just the back of it and my grandma peeled a whole bunch of pecans for me and packed it as well as um, like fried peanuts, I think. It's really good though. It's just a lot. So I'll slowly eat that when I'm watching stuff or whatever. Um, this stuff I've had before. Um, they're like a multi-grain yam slash veggie uh, cereal, hot cereal. And they're really good. Um, slightly sweet. Um, these are like, uh, they're like hard bread. Um, my friend said they're good for bruschetta. But I don't really know what else to use that for. Maybe I'll just eat it as is for breakfast. Uh, this one, this one, soft bread, basically. So it's kind of like sandwich bread and inside is like red beans or something. And um, it's just sweet and good. I like that. This one is like just steak strips um, from Aldi. And 
This is the like Chinese premium noodle soup. Oh, and this is um, uh, either green tea or red tea that my uncle from China brought back um, to America. And my grandma just gave it to me because no one there really likes drinking tea. So, um, oh, this stuff in the bag. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is called Crunchy Rollers Organic Puff Brown Rice. So I have like two of those in here. Uh, I have these little things. Uh, where are they? They're like, okay, there's no English on it, but they're like, um, maybe like fried dough with sesame twists. A few of those. And this is like a rice peanut snack with sesame seeds. Not sure if it's sweet or not. I think they're sweet. And lastly, not sure where they got this from, but it's called Moe's Dark Bacon. Smoked uncured bacon from a family farm in New Hampshire with a sprinkling of smoked salt. Look at the price of that. Eight forty nine for this. It's crazy. It hasn't been opened yet, but um I'm excited to try it though. So yeah, all these snacks, um all these <laughs> all these snacks uh and stuff were from my grandma and I know she loves me a lot and I miss her already. Pimple's still there, no uh but anyway, uh this concludes my video of the summary um, up the Georgia trip and came out better than I expected way better because I got to see mom as well because uh, she I'm so proud of her and really appreciate her finding that bravery to see me at the very few hours of my trip but yeah um, it just kind of shows uh, as well the whole difference between Western and Eastern culture where Western is more focused on self-happiness and um, the importance of uh, doing whatever makes you happy, right? But the East is more about um, if you just focus on yourself and your own happiness, then that's more, in their eyes, selfish because it should be more about community and family. So uh, if you do things that the family isn't happy about, and doesn't agree with, then it's uh, seen as selfish and inconsiderate uh, because the choices that you make is not just your own for your own uh, happiness. It's part of the bigger picture, you know? So uh, I finally understand that. And so I respect um, the struggle that they're going through with the whole mindset change that, uh, I, why I left and did what I did, it's still hard for them to understand that. Uh, but given some more time, I think they will come through, all of them. Maybe maybe my dad might not, but um, hopefully my aunt's next. So, uh, yeah. Um, all right, well, thanks for watching this, and I will update you guys later on whatever else in my life. Okay, bye.